Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. I, I was taking care of a gentleman who was an artist, and I asked him how his pain was, and, and he said it was about a level three out of 10, which, you know, Jayco and all the standards tell us keep it to three or under so that that's minimal pain. And I said, okay, that's fabulous, it's at a three. What would you like it to be? And he looked me square in the teeth and said seven. I'm thinking, okay, he, he's misunderstanding me. He's got the scale wrong, something's wrong. So I pull out my little card with little faces on it and I said, show me. And sure enough, he's going to the seven. And what he said to me is he said, you know, I'm dying. And, if I, and as long as I'm feeling some pain, I know I'm still here. Back off a little <laughs> with the pain meds. So how comfortable do you want to be? Can be? There can be some surprising answers there. There certainly are times I had an ALS patient and they couldn't talk. So we needed a way of her telling me or her family members who were managing her medications if she needed a little bit more. So prior to her getting to that point where she couldn't talk, we made a system. And I said, Lois, all you have to do is this. Hold your finger and do this, which she could do. And if that is going to tell us something's wrong, Something's wrong, and she, it worked for her. She did a great job with it, and she would let us know, you gotta beef this up a little bit. Some clients wanna be asleep. I say, to, I say to my clients all the time, do you want us to make you really sleepy? And some of them say, yes, I don't wanna experience this. Help me be sleepy until I'm not sleepy anymore, until I'm gone. Other clients say, I wanna bear the pain, I wanna be here, I wanna be present, I wanna watch what's going on around me. Some people find that overwhelming at Thanksgiving time if they're really sick and at the end of their life and they don't want to be part of it. But some people say, I want to be here. These are things that the healthcare proxy needs to know and it's a big conversation as you can, as you can imagine. Different cultures need different things. Some cultures are very, very fearful of pain. And as long as you can remove the pain, they'll do anything. They, they want you to do anything, remove the pain because it's scary to them. So it's all very, very individual. How do you want to be treated? Well, I mean, the easy answer, I want to be treated respectfully. And to me, what this means is how do you want to be treated? Do you want us to have a conversation about the fact that you're at the end of your life? Do you want to be part of that conversation? Or, and I've had clients that just need to talk about it. They need to talk about it. They need to talk about where they are, how they're feeling. They need to talk about, they need to have all their family around them, they need to be touched, they need, to, they need all of those things and they're able to identify them. And then I've also had some people that have said, I want the world to go around me, I want to sit in this chair, but no one is to talk about my dying. I am not going. I'm not going anywhere, I'm fine. I just want everybody to leave me alone, I want to be an observer. And that is their wish. And that's what the family needs to know. How do you want to be treated? How do you want us to deal with this? I, that one guy, I had a guy that was um, <coughs> never going to die. And he sat, he sat me very, you know, very sternly. And I he always said, tell him, I said, if you, got an, if you want an estate plan that assumes you're not going to die, you know, I'm going to have trouble with that. You know, but <laughs> they, they don't want to listen. He would talk to me about it. He would talk to me about his fears. He talked to me about his fears of losing the house for his wife, trying to figure out how to settle all of that stuff. He was an attorney, um, but he would absolutely forbid me to talk about any of that when his family were in the room. His kids were all grown. And it's, that's kind of hard to tell you the truth. You know, I mean, if, if, if the kids wanted to say something to him and sort of let, them, let him know how they felt about him and what kind of a dad he'd been and all that stuff. But again, his wish was that, that was, those conversations were not gonna happen. So it's not always easy for the folks on the other side, and oftentimes we have to make sure that they've got some help and some counseling dealing with the fact that they certainly know dad is dying, but they can't have the conversation because he says no to the conversation. That's an important part of it. And then, um, what do you want your loved ones to know? 
I, was, I told a story last night. I kind of had everybody sort of misty-eyed. I had a woman that was about 58 years old, um, and she was dying of melanoma. And her three grown daughters were in college. And, and she didn't want to pull them out of college during her time of being really sick. We, we sort of figured out that she'd probably make it to spring break um, and that they probably wouldn't go back after spring break but because um, they'd want to be with her. But So one of the things that was the most important thing to Joy was that they not forget the sound of her voice. She didn't want her girls to forget the sound of her voice. So on her five wishes, when we talked about what do you want people to know, she made a recording with the help of, of, the, of the staff, of the hospice staff. She made a recording of her voice to each daughter. And to Sarah, she talked about how she felt. I think she told Sarah where she was conceived. That could be a little weird. But she, she talked about how she felt while she was pregnant with Sarah. She talked about that first morning when she held Sarah. She talked about Sarah's first day at school and the things that Sarah liked as a child. She kind of reviewed the baby book of each kid. And then she talked to them also about what she hoped for them as they got married and had, and had their first baby. And she had this great conversation with them, but she also, we recorded it. And, and each child was given the recording and a couple of items that she wanted them to have. And that was her way of making sure that they never forgot the sound of her voice. And, and maybe it's a letter that people want to write so that they can tell their loved ones the things that they want to know, or maybe it's a recording, or maybe it's a drawing. It could be different things to different people, but that was what was important to her, was she didn't want them, she wanted them to hear her voice on their wedding day. So um, that's, that's sort of the five wishes. And it, so, as I said, I, I do challenge the whole legal document thing, but I will tell you that when, you're, when your clients get to that point, the physicians want to know who's the person. Who are they and can you get them here for me? Or can I talk to them? Who's the healthcare proxy? So all of these discussions need to have happened with the healthcare proxy and it needs to be the right person and it needs to be updated as often as it needs to be updated so that it's not a husband that was the, named the healthcare proxy three years ago and now he's got dementia, because now we're in trouble. So um, I, think that's, I think I'll stop there. That's great. Thank you very much, Sandy. So, so you're just going to switch my. So you heard a lot of things about what the five wishes are, right? Uh, and, they, and the first one is, it's a healthcare proxy. Right? That's one of the, it really is a valid healthcare proxy. Um, it is, this is from the five wishes that I wanted to read. Once filled out and properly signed, it is valid under the general laws of most states. That's the, what the language is here on the, on the five wishes. And it is, as a healthcare proxy, valid in most states. As a set of instructions regarding how you're going to be treated if you're incapacitated, it has no legal validity, right? It is not a living will, because living wills aren't enforceable in Massachusetts, right? To the extent that that language is there and the doctor is reading it because you're incapacitated, it could just, it may confuse him, right? To the extent that you want to tell somebody all of this stuff, right? And I guess this is going to be my kind of general observation about the, the, this document. What you probably want to do with the five wishes is not sign it, right? Or sign it, but not, don't make it into a valid healthcare proxy, but rather have this as this document that the people that you're working with are gonna be using to guide them. Because the wish two, which is a whole set of things about comfort care. Oh, I really wanna have someone you know, holding my hand and patting my forehead with a damp cloth. I mean, I read number three and I'm like, well, who would not want this, you know? But the point is, none of that is medical instructions to a medical professional regarding how to be treated medically. It's very important, right? And you may really want to say that and think about that and, and, and have your family know that. Number four, do I want to be prayed for? Do I want to stay at home? Do I want someone to hold my hand? These are all wonderful things. They're not medical judgments. Someone really does need to know about them. And finally, what Sandy was just talking about, how do I want to be remembered, right? What should you be doing after death, right? 
By the way, um, I tr I'm going to mention in this context, though, there's an interesting piece of the healthcare proxy which most people are not aware of. Um, the, the, the law regarding um, your giving your organs to the organ bank, um, many of you would assume, I bet, that the way that you give, you decide whether to give organs to the organ bank is that you sign up, right? You sign up through the registry of motor vehicles, you sign up, you get one of those little cards, right? And then after you die, if you have said that you want to donate your organs, um, then the registry will, you know, contact the family and, and, and take the remains, and that's how they do it. They'll take the remains, your body, they'll bring it to Waltham. There's actually a place where the organs get donated, right? They'll extract the things that they want and then send the remains back to the funeral home. Well, a few years ago, I think because they weren't getting enough donations, um, the folks who, who were in this business got the law changed. And so the law now is that if you have not specifically signed something, said something in writing saying that you don't want your tissue or other things to be donated, it can be donated, right? And the person, there are a list of people who are in charge of your remains for pur purposes of donation after your death. And the person who's the first in line in terms of the in being in charge of your remains is your healthcare proxy. Who would have thunk it? Who would have known that, right? So when you're dealing with that issue on the healthcare proxy, you may want to, you may want to, you may want to include something in the healthcare proxy that does say to your proxy what, where you want your remains to go. That's something that you maybe want to be specific about. But in, in general, after Sandy went through this and really talked it through, she convinced me, despite my skepticism, that the five wishes does have really kind of a meaningful role to play in terms of helping people think about this whole cluster of issues. But it is not a living will the way we would typically think about it, right? So now, now Dr. Ricard uh, is going to talk to you about the one thing, right, which in many ways is a living will, the one and only thing which is a living will, which is the instructions that you, are, that you and your doctor together are writing down on the most form, right? So, and, 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 and having heard what I've talked about and what Sandy has talked about in the context of how these decisions really can vary depending on what's happening on the ground, you really want to think about the appropriateness of some of the living will sections of the most form. Dr. Ricard. 